Unconventional meeting spots are helping bring rural Vermont communities closer together. Our partners at Seven Days profiled several of those spaces, and Rachel Hellman joins us to talk about her story for this week's issue. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So, Rachel, I think when I spoke with you last summer about one of these spots, the Hardwick Gazette building, uh, it, you were, it was kind of just getting going as this kind of community space. How has yeah. it transformed in the last year? Yeah, it's been awesome to catch up uh, with the Civic Standard, which has taken over that space. Um, and they report profound changes in their community, um, just, just being able to get together. Their events are really fun and playful. They have rock, paper, scissors tournaments and folk jams. Um, and, and those little things uh, I learned through my reporting are ultimately, you know, why people want to stay in a place and get to know their neighbors and, and you know, feel like they're in a community. I know when I was at one of the other spots you profiled, the Elmore store several years ago for a story that I did on it, they were just talking about adding a pizza oven and re-energizing that space to try to become more of a gathering hub. Is that kind of a common theme among the spots that you heard of, that they were trying to take something maybe more traditional and give it a new spin? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really how this story first came to be. You know, we're seeing trends across the board for decades now in Vermont of general stores closing and churches shuttering and it made us think well where where are people going how are people still feeling in community um, and and the threads that are there are still kind of weaving their way forward but in new ways um, and through cool projects like Elmore's you know kind of revamp of their space or um, Harry's Hardware and Cabot which is a bar and a hardware store so I think people are thinking how can we make this a financially viable situation or in the case of Elmore how can the community support something that we see as invaluable to our community. And were there any other spots that stood out to you as particularly unique in this theme? Yeah, I think the number one that came up as unique was um, transfer stations across the state. You know, we surveyed our readers to come up with our list, um, and a number of them said that it's their, their town dump where they end up running into their neighbors. And lo and behold, when I went out to report, that was absolutely the case. And I have to imagine getting people to show up to these when they're new is maybe the hardest part of trying to start something. Were there any common themes on how organizers got people to take notice? And then do they have any tips for communities that might want to build a community gathering spot? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting you bring that up. I think a lot of it was very organic, but there were some common themes that definitely came up. And one of the most, uh, I think, obvious was that these are welcoming spaces with a low barrier to entry. So that means there shouldn't be a high cost. You know, it can be a beer or a coffee, but, you know, nothing more than that, really. And that, you know, everyone feels welcome with different political views, different races, different genders. Um, and that's something that's hard to, to, you know, put your finger on exactly how that works, but you can sense it when you're in a place. Um, and so I think, you know, thinking about how to attract as many people as possible and keep it simple, focusing on place and communities is what I saw as some of the common threads. Your story is out in this week's issue of Seven Days on Newsstands Now. Rachel, thanks for the time. Thanks so much for having me.